Yes, so let us see the projectile motion. And the basic formula that is involved in this projectile motion. So see here, projectile motion can then unko pata already. Just revision hum karenge prafat ki kya kya formula us ke use hote hai. So there is uh, initial velocity of the projectile, which is denoted by u, and it has two components, one of which is u x, and the second one is u y. Correct hai? And this is the these are the components of initial velocity specially and the angle made by this u with the x axis is denoted by theta remember and as this projectile proceeds further its velocity goes on bending more and more towards horizontal and ultimately after this highest point what happens is the velocity still goes on bending in the downward direction and at a particular point the projectile falls and the, at the same level, at some distance from this point here, that is called as the range of projectile. This distance is called the range of projectile. And the height of maximum height of projectile is this one here. The maximum vertical distance traveled by the projectile will be the maximum height. And also by symmetry, we understand that if we draw a tangent to this curve here at this point here, then it will make the same angle. Okay. It will make the same angle with the horizontal theta as it is made here. Okay. And also that the velocity at any point in the projectile can be found out here. So at any point, the velocity at this point will be along the tangent. And that is denoted by V, which can also be resolved into two components once again, that is Vx and Vy, where Vx has to be same as Ux. So the horizontal component here. So it remains unchanged. It remains constant. So we can say that Vx is actually going to be Ux, no doubt. But the vertical component goes on changing. And there is an equation for that. Vy is actually the, can be obtained by first kinematic equation applied in vertical motion, which is Vy is equal to Uy minus Gt. Correct? This is the first kinematic equation applied in vertical motion. Okay. And one more thing is that, see, uh, the vertical distance, the vertical distance hota hai, y coordinate usko bol sakte hai, us particle ka, us point ka, jaha pe particle present hai, or x coordinate will be this much here. So, ye one uska x coordinate, no doubt. So, x coordinate can be written to be equal to ux into t, because in the horizontal direction, ux remains constant. And with this constant velocity, it will cover a distance x, which is given by ux into t, where speed into time, it now distance cover karega, horizontal may. But in vertical jo distance cover, hota hai, that is not obtained by this simple equation, but we'll have to use the first, second kinematical equation here in order to obtain the vertical distance, which is obtained to be as by, uy t minus half g t square. This is called as a second kinematical equation applied in vertical motion, remember. And third is of no use. Third equation can be used in the vertical motion only. That gives us by square is equal to uy square minus 2gy. This is the third kinematical equation applied in vertical motion. And third kinematic equation cannot be applied on the uh, horizontal motion because it gives Vx is equal to Ux only because Vx square is equal to Ux square plus 2 into acceleration is 0. So plus 0 agar karenge, to usse bit prak nahi padega. Or square root lene ke baad, phir se humko yahi baat mil jayegi, jo already humko pata hai. Jo first kinematic equation se bhi wahi mila hua hai. No doubt. So is liye ye teen kinematic equation humko achhi tarah se yaad rakhne hai. Thik hai? और इसके अलावा फिर आता है uh, ux का value in terms of u तो so, ux is actually going to be u cos theta in terms of u and uy is going to be u sin theta okay so this ux and uy can be expressed in terms of u and theta in this way okay and that See here, uh, we, we also have the equations for range 
मैक्सिमम हाइट एंड टाइम ऑफ लाइट इन द केस ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन एंड उससे भी पहले हमारे पास एक फॉर्मूला है दैट इज द ट्रेजेक्टरी ऑफ द प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन व्हाट इज द इक्वेशन फॉर ट्रेजेक्टरी ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन तो प्रोजेक्टाइल का ट्रेजेक्टरी जो होता है मतलब वाई और एक्स के बीच में रिलेशनशिप तो वो बनता है इस तरह से वाई इज इक्वल टू एक्स इंटू टेन थीटा माइनस जी इंटू एक्स स्क्वायर अपॉन टू यू स्क्वायर कॉ स्क्वायर थीटा ओके दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द फॉर्मूला फॉर ट्रेजेक्टरी एंड ऑल्सो दिस ट्रेजेक्टरी कैन बी एक्सप्रेस इन अदर फॉर्म दैट इज एक्स टेन थीटा इंटू ब्रैकेट में आएगा वन माइनस एक्स अपॉन आर दिस इज अनदर इक्वेशन फॉर ट्रेजेक्टरी remember this correctly and also that the max uh, range range of projectile can be obtained to be equal to u square into sin theta sin 2 theta upon g okay this is the formula for range and one more formula for range is simply that 2 ux into uy upon g okay Remember this also. It's required sometimes. कभी कभी ये तुमको बहुत काम में आता है कभी ये वाला काम में आता है तो यहाँ पे यू एक्स और यू वाई दोनों यूज हुए हैं देखो यहाँ पे ठीक से द नेक्स्ट इज अबाउट द फॉर्मूला फॉर मैक्सिम हाइट विच इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी यू स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर थीटा अपॉन टू जी दिस इज द मैक्सिमम हाइट Even we can also express it in terms of u y. That is u y square upon two g. This simply tells us that the maximum height doesn't depend on the horizontal component of the velocity. It only depends on vertical component of the velocity. If the vertical component is going to be the same in different cases, then the height of the projectile is going to be the same, no doubt. And third one is time of flight. तो टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट के लिए भी हमारे पास दो फॉर्मूले हैं वन वन ऑफ विच इज लाइक टू यू साइन थीटा अपॉन जी एंड सेकेंड वन इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू वाई विच कैन बी रिटर्न एज टू टाइम्स ऑफ यू वाई अपॉन जी एंड टाइम ऑफ एसेंट एंड टाइम ऑफ डिसेंट इच ऑफ वन आर जस्ट हाफ ऑफ दिस टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट ओके तो टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट का आधा होता है टाइम ऑफ एसेंट एज वेल एज टाइम ऑफ डिसेंट नो डाउट and also remember that we have the result proved the result that the uh, trajectory of the projectile or range of projectile is maximum when theta is going to be 45 degree and h is going to be maximum when theta is going to be 90 matlab kya na ki agar hum seedha straight mein agar vertically agar throw karenge projectile ko to wo maximum distance pe vertical distance pe jaake wapas aayega करेक्ट है तो हाइट मैक्सिमम कब होगा जब थीटा 90 है बट अगर थीटा 45 है तो आर विल बी मैक्सिमम तो आर विल बी मैक्सिमम इन केस व्हेन थीटा इज 45 ओके एंड व्हेन थीटा इज 45 स्पेशली तो उस समय भी उस केस केस में भी हमको हमारे पास कुछ रिजल्ट्स है जैसे देखो अगर थीटा 45 अगर होता है तो ये इसका पाथ मिलता है इस तरह से सो so, इसको हम बोलते हैं आर मैक्स ओके आर मैक्स एंड उस समय का जो हाइट है तो उसको हम बोल सकते हैं एच सपोज एंड प्रूड ऑलरेडी दैट दिस आर मैक्स हैपन्स टू बी एक्चुअली इक्वल टू फोर टाइम्स ऑफ एच और वी कैन कॉल इट एज एच मैक्स आल्सो ठीक है सो इन दिस केस द हाइट विल बी एच मैक्स व्हेन आर इज मैक्सिमम द हाइट एट दैट टाइम विल बी कॉल्ड एज द एच मैक्स बट डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज दिस इज नॉट एक्चुअली द मैक्सिमम हाइट ऑफ द प्रोजेक्टाइल क्योंकि अगर प्रोजेक्टाइल अगर सीधा वर्टिकली अगर हम थ्रो करेंगे तो इससे भी ज्यादा हाइट हमको ऑप्टेन मिलेगा नो डाउट लेकिन जस्ट वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज एच मैक्स बिकॉज थीटा इज फोर्टी फाइव सो थीटा फोर्टी फाइव होने के टाइम का जो हाइट होता है उसको हमको एच मैक्स बोलना है एक्चुअली इट इज नॉट द मैक्सिमम हाइट मैक्सिमम हाइट इज ऑप्टेन ओनली वेन थीटा इज इक्वल टू नाइनटी डिग्री दैट इज वी हैव जस्ट सीन नाउ सो वी हैव अंडरस्टैंड वेन थीटा इज फोर्टी फाइव the corresponding range is denoted by r max and corresponding height is denoted by h max 
and both of them are related by this equation that is r max equal to four times of h max remember and <clears throat> all these things are the basic formulae which you have to prove in the projectile okay one more concept is that there is a concept of the projectile which is thrown at the horizontal matlab zero degree angle at some height suppose ek tower hai aur is tower se is point pe humne is projectile ko throw kar diya aur wo bhi horizontal direction mein theek hai the by making an angle zero with the horizontal aise case mein is projectile ka path kaise hoga so obviously it will be like this it will go on bending more and more in the downward direction and at a particular point it will fall on the ground here to yahan pe wo ja ke ja pe fall hoga to us samay bhi wo vertical nahi hoga zaruri nahi but it will make some angle with the vertical like this but uh, how how far it falls on the ground will be called as the range of that projectile okay uska range jo hai wo alag cheez hota hai and the height where this projectile has been projected from it is noted by h suppose so this h r and time of flight capital t suppose to wo bhi ek dusre ke sath connected hote hai aur unke beech mein ke jo relationship hai wo bhi hum derive kar sakte hain ab yahan pe kyunki agar u itne speed se agar is projectile ko hum throw karte hain idhar at highest point pe to us case mein kya hoga ki uska jo ye jo horizontal component hai wahi u banega no 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 need to resolve it in uh, any ways at this highest point here it will remain u only no doubt but afterwards as this projectile goes on moving further the velocity at every point will go on changing and velocity in general suppose at this point is going to be v then it can be resolved into two components again where it is u cos v u v cos theta and v sin theta this component uh, is denoted by v cos theta or we can call it as vx here and this another component will be denoted by vy here so we can understand here that vx is actually going to be same as u here because horizontal direction mein koi acceleration nahi hota hai so there is no change in the horizontal direction in the velocity obviously so we can say that vx is actually going to be u no problem and at the same time we have that uh vertical velocity v, vy can also be calculated the vy value is going to be zero initially when time t equal to zero vy is going to be zero no doubt so vy at any point can be obtained by first kinematic equation that is zero minus gt means uh, vy is equal to minus of gt ye simple sa equation humko mil raha hai and at the same time if if we suppose that the coordinates of this point are nothing but x comma y then we can say x can be obtained to be simply equal to so x will be actually equal to uh, u initial velocity u multiplied by time that's it so u into t ye ho gaya x and is is se hi humko ye milega ki t is equal to x upon u aisa hum likh sakte hain aaram se no doubt and if we use this value of time in the second kinematic equation applied in the vertical motion here then we can get that y is equal to तो वर्टिकल मोशन में सेकंड कैरेमेट्रिक क्वेश्चन क्या बनेगा वाई इज इक्वल टू होता क्या है वो एस इक्वल टू यू टी प्लस हाफ एटी स्क्वायर राइट तो यहाँ पे वाई इज इक्वल टू वर्टिकल में ये डिस्टेंस हो गया और यू कितना है यहाँ पे जीरो है तो जीरो इंटू टी मीन जीरो प्लस हाफ इंटू ए के बदले आएगा माइनस जी और टी एज इट इज सो दिस इज टी स्क्वायर दैट मीन्स वाई वी आर गोइंग टू बी गेट इट एज माइनस ऑफ हाफ जी टी स्क्वायर and ultimately if we put the value of t as x upon u from this equation here then we can get that y is equal to minus of g into u of uh, x upon u ka whole square correct hai and if we simplify this further then we can get this as minus of half g x square upon u square which can also be written as y is equal to g minus of g x square upon 2u square okay this is the equation of trajectory of the projectile which is fired horizontally this is for a horizontal projectile remember
okay and finally we can also get the expression for the range if you know the height or you can also find out the height if you know the range okay so here you can find it out easily so uske liye humko kya karna hai dekho yahan pe simply y ke badle h dalna hai aur is x ke badle r dalna hai that's it so we can get that y is replaced by h and that is equal to minus of acha minus h kyun kyunki y will be negative so it will be minus of h which is going to be actually equal to minus of g into x ke badle aayega r so r square upon 2 times of u square and if we cancel this minus sign then we can get the relationship between h and r that is h is equal to g r square upon 2 u square which can also be expressed as r square is equal to 2 u square h upon g okay so this is the formula for r square even from we, from this we can also get the formula for r which is u into root of 2h 2 times of h upon g that's it so this is the formula for r and what about the time of flight in the same case how will you find out the time required for this projectile to move up to the lowest point here it can be easily get, uh, found out because we have this equation here so when this time of t small t will become exactly equal to time of flight at that time this x will become actually equal to r and hence we can say that the time of flight in this case t will actually be equal to r upon u yes so this is actually going to be the formula for time of flight in this case no doubt so this is all, for, all about for the horizontal projectile okay <coughs> many times the questions are asked like uh, if suppose there are two projectiles one of which is projected at an angle theta and travels up to this point here and another one is projected at an angle 90 minus theta it travels this way and just hits the ground at some same point here ओके okay, दोनों के लिए रेंज सेम है ये होता है फॉर एवरी गिवन रेंज ऑफ द प्रोजेक्टाइल देर आर टू एंगल्स करस्पॉन्डिंग टू इट वन इज थीटा एंड वन इज नाइंटी माइनस थीटा ओके बट इन दीज टू केसेस द हाइट्स आर डिफरेंट यू कैन कॉल इट एज एच वन एंड सेकेंड वन एज एच टू नो डाउट एनी वन द टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट्स आर ऑल्सो डिफरेंट we can call them as t1 and t2 and there are relationships between t1 and t2 and even h1 and h2 what are they let us see first of all r is going to be equal to r1 is going to be equal to r2 just because r depends on ux as well as uy or we can say sin 2 theta ke upar wo depend karta hai to isliye r1 can be proved to be equal to r2 no doubt but what is the relationship between h1 and h2 what is the formula for h1 here h1 means the height, maximum height attained by the projectile which is thrown with an angle theta it will be obtained by the formula u square into sin square theta upon 2g correct hai? and what about h2 here so h2 can be proved, uh, found out by the same formula only theta is get going to be replaced by 90 minus theta so that we get this sin square 90 minus theta here and 2g as it is so that we can prove that h2 is actually going to be u square cos square theta upon 2g get it so using this we can get the relationship between h1 and h2 as well it is that h1 upon h2 is actually going to be tan square theta because if we just take the ratio of this equation and this equation here then u square by 2g just gets cancelled straight away and sin square theta upon cos square theta is left as tan square theta no doubt so h1 upon h2 equal to tan square theta hai to milta hai no doubt but at the same time h1's 
प्लस एच टू एक्चुअली हेपन टू बी देखो एच वन प्लस एच टू कितना बनता है एच वन प्लस एच टू अगर करेंगे तो यहाँ पे ये वैल्यू और ये वैल्यू अगर हम एड करेंगे तो यू स्क्वायर बाई टू जी कैन बी टेकन ऑफ कॉमन एंड साइन स्क्वायर थीटा प्लस कॉ स्क्वायर थीटा हेपन्स टू बी वन एंड डेट्स वाई वी कैन गेट दिस सिंप्लीफाइड एज यू स्क्वायर बाय टू जी एज अ सिंपल थिंग दिस वी हैव टू रिमेंबर हियर सो ओके तो एच वन प्लस एच टू हेपन्स टू बी सिंपली इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर बाय टू जी नो डाउट and at the same time we can also derive the relationship between t1 and t2 the formula for t1 here is going to be actually 2 u sin theta upon g correct hai so this is the formula for t1 in the same way we can get the formula for t2 again this theta is to be replaced by 90 minus theta here and that is to be divided by g as it is so that we can get this t2 to be equal to 2u into cos theta upon g correct hai yes and then we can just say that t1 upon t2 if we take the ratio of this t1 and t2 here then we are going to get this 2u by g 2u by g cancel and what we are left with is simply tan theta correct hai so t1 upon t2 is actually going to be tan theta and at the same time if we square and add these two T1 and T2. So T1 square plus T2 square is actually going to be. So here we have two two u sine theta upon g ka square upon plus two u cos theta upon g ka square. Usme se two u upon g ka whole square can be taken common, and sine square theta plus cos square theta remains one. And hence we can simply say that this will be two u upon g and uska square. This is going to be the relationship between T1 and T2. That is the time of flight for the projectiles which are thrown at angles theta and 90 minus theta as well. Okay, remember this correctly also. Even uh, if the two projectiles are thrown with an angles, you know, 45 is the symmetric point, right? So if we throw one projectile with an angle which is given by 45 minus theta. Okay, and another projectile is thrown with an angle that is forty-five plus theta. Then again, both of these projectiles will behave like this only. In case जैसे ही वो behave करेंगे, remember. So ninety uh, theta or ninety minus theta, same जैसे ही होते हैं, same वैसे ही यहाँ पे forty-five minus theta and forty-five plus theta will also behave similarly. Because if we consider this forty-five minus theta as x, suppose. Or suppose alpha, then this 45 plus theta can be obtained by 90 minus alpha. Just we can check. If you work out 90 minus alpha, then 90 minus alpha happens to be 90 minus 45 minus theta, right? Which has to be 90 minus 45 and minus of minus plus theta, and hence we can get this as 45 plus theta. तो so 45 plus theta can be written to be 90 minus alpha. तो so, कोई भी दो complementary angles, 45 minus theta and 45 plus theta, or also the complementary angles only. तो so, whatever we have proved for this uh, two, that is theta and 90 minus theta, can also be proved for 45 minus theta and 45 plus theta, equally. Okay. So let us see some MCQs just based on this.
Yes. <clears throat> I hope you can see the questions. One more thing uh, is to be remembered, see here. It is that whenever the projectile is thrown at an angle theta, suppose ye projectile jo hai, humne theta itna angle se throw kiya, correct hai? Aur u is speed se agar throw kiya, to humko pata hai ki uska jo kinetic energy hai, to wo usko hum bol sakte hai ki, that is initial kinetic energy. We can say this will be half m into u square. Correct? Hai? This becomes the initial kinetic energy, no doubt. But as this projectile moves further, what happens is its potential energy goes on increasing because its height is increasing, right? And its kinetic energy goes on decreasing. But it does not become zero at highest point because it's still moving. Okay? But it becomes minimum, no doubt. And again goes on increasing further as it falls down. Just as it falls down, it falls down. kinetic energy is increasing again. And the potential energy is increasing again. Then we can say the potential energy is increasing again. We can say the potential energy is So u becomes zero at this point here. And k, I, k becomes same as k i at this point here. मतलब जितना उसका काइनेटिक एनर्जी पहले स्टार्टिंग में था प्रोजेक्शन के टाइम उतना ही काइनेटिक एनर्जी उसको फिर से वापस मिल जाता है यहां पे जब वो फॉल होता है ग्राउंड पे आता है बट इस पॉइंट पे अगर देखेंगे ठीक से तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी एट द हाईएस्ट पॉइंट कैन बी सपोज्ड टू बी kh वी कैन से kh एंड द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एट दैट पॉइंट इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी uh वी से हियर kh इज सपोज्ड टू बी मिनिमम हियर द काइनेटिक एनर्जी एट दिस पॉइंट इज गोइंग टू एक्चुअली Minimum. Why? Because its velocity is going to be very, very small at the highest point. Because it only has the horizontal component at this point here. Doesn't have any vertical component at this point. And that's why the kinetic energy is going to be minimum. But what? how much is that kinetic energy at that point? Have you looked at that? This velocity is how This u can be resolved into two components here. The one is one of which is denoted by ux, correct? Hai? And vertical one will be uy here, correct? Hai? Okay. So there are two components of velocity at this point here, that is ux and uy, out of which, yes, at, at this point here, the velocity is purely horizontal, right? And since velocity is horizontal, and also one thing is that the horizontal velocity in projectile doesn't change, it remains constant. And that's why we can say that there is only horizontal component of the velocity here at this point, and that is ux only, and no vertical component at all. So here the vertical component uy is missing at this point here, at highest point here. And that's why the expression for kh, that is the final kinetic energy, or the kinetic energy of the projectile at the highest point, happens to be actually equal to half of m into ux ka whole square. Correct? Hai? ux whole square. So in this way, we can get the kinetic energy at highest point and as well as the kinetic energy at the initial point, first point here. And even we can get the relationship between these two because we know the relationship between this u and ux as well. As we know that if u is resolved into two components, ux actually happens to be u cos theta, right? And hence, we can just put this value of u here and get this kinetic energy at highest point modified simply to be equal to kh is equal to half of m into pe ux ke badle kya aane wala hai? u cos theta aane wala hai. so here it will be u cos theta and it's a whole square right so if we just simplify this further then we obtain this kh to be equal to half of m into u square into cos square theta, correct? Hai? But as we already know that this half m u square is already termed as ki, that is nothing but the initial kinetic energy. 
so we can say that kh that is the final kinetic energy or the kinetic energy at the highest point of the projectile motion here kh is going to be actually ki into cos square theta this is again one of the important result see here this half mu square has been replaced by ki as well so we formula as a very important result in projectile motion the projectile in the in case of the projectile motion the kinetic energy at the highest point is going to be the minimum one and that minimum value happens actually to be equal to ki into cos square theta remember and even if we try to find out the uh, potential energy so how can we get that the potential energy at the highest point can be obtained to be simply mgh so here it is to be m into g into h where h stands for the maximum height that is attained by this projectile correct eh? and now we can just put the value of h which already we have here for the projectile you know what is the value of h here it is u square sin square theta upon 2g and if we replace it here then we can get uh to be simply equal to m into g into h where h is simply u square sin square theta upon 2g right here yes so that here we can see this g gets cancelled and we are left with uh is equal to half of ye m as it is into u square as it is into sin square theta here as it is and even once again we can here replace this half m u square by ki which is already there so if you replace it by that then we can get this as uh is equal to ki into sin square theta this is another standard result in case of the projectile motion remember the projectile in case of projectile motion that highest point the potential energy is going to be the maximum and its maximum value at that point can be obtained to be simply ki into sin square theta remember and obviously if we add both of these kh and k uh, uh so kh or uh in dono ko agar hum add karenge to kya milega what do you expect anybody tell if we add kh and uh what can you expect see here according to the law of conservation of energy whatever kinetic energy we have given this projectile at the start will get conserved because initially there was no potential energy in the body right because it was it was at the lowest point which is nothing but that at zero level so zero level pe wo tha to uske paas potential energy to kuch tha hi nahi but whatever kinetic energy was given to it was the total energy uh, given to it right and out of that kinetic energy some of it has been converted into the potential energy at the highest point here which is denoted by uh and remaining amount will remain as a kinetic energy so that's why we can say that at a highest point the kinetic energy plus potential energy will be the same as the kinetic energy given at the uh, lowest point or given at the time of projection that means we can expect that this kh plus uh must be equal to ki and even we can prove it see here what is kh it is nothing but ki into cos square theta right hai so here it is going to be ki into cos square theta okay what is uh see here it is actually going to be ki into sin square theta right so just replace it by that and get this as ki into sin square theta okay and if we just take this ki common then we can get this cos square theta plus sin square theta left hand inside so that cos square theta plus sin square theta becomes 1 and ki into 1 becomes ki only which is nothing but rhs that that is we have proved here okay so you have nailed lhs se start kiya aur rhs pe pahunch gaye so this is going to be the proof that kh plus k k u h becomes actually ki which is nothing but the another form of law of conservation of energy 
And the last point we have to mention here is about the angular momentum. Remember, what is angular momentum? It is noted by L. And actually, uh, angular momentum is defined as the linear momentum into the moment arm. Remember, linear momentum multiplied by moment arm. What is moment arm? It is the perpendicular distance of the momentum line, line of momentum from the fixed point or origin, we can say. So uh, this is the formula for angular momentum. And in general, angular momentum is always defined as mv into r, where r has to be the perpendicular distance of the direction of mv or line of mv from the origin. Okay. So accordingly, if we have suppose this projectile projected at some point and it travels along this path like this here, then at the highest point, what is the angular momentum of this projectile about origin? If you want to find out. So, here is the velocity of this point. So, it will be ux. Correct? Hai? Ux. And if the mass is m, then how much is the linear momentum? Linear momentum at this point, at highest point, can be written to be equal to m into ux. No doubt. And if we see carefully, then this line is at a distance h from the origin. Perpendicular distance kitna is line ka h hai. So this liye angular momentum jo milega humko, to wo rahega p into h, where p can be replaced by m into ux, and h can be replaced by h ka jo formula humare paas hai already, to jo ki 2 uy square upon g hota hai, to wo agar hum nidal diya hai idhar, sorry, uy square upon 2g hota hai. So if we have put it then we will get simply uy square upon 2g. And this will actually be the angular momentum of the projectile at highest point, which is going to be m into ux into uy square upon 2 times of g. Even we can also express it in terms of uh, u cos theta and sin theta as well. So if we put ux and u cos theta, then this will be formula modified okay, by m into u cos theta. This is replacement for ux. Okay? And ui can be replaced by u sin theta, right? So here it will be u sin theta and whole square. That is to be divided by 2g. Correct? Hai? So that we can just simplify this further and get this u sin theta ka whole square. Matlab u square sin square theta. Gaya wo. Or already here is u. Hai. So this will be actually m into u cube into cos theta into sin square theta upon 2g. And if suppose by chance the projectile is 40, uh, thrown at an angle 45 degree, especially, then in that case, the angular momentum at the highest point, that is LH, we can say. This is also the formula for LH only. Huh? LH means angular momentum at highest point. Okay. It will be actually obtained by putting theta equal to 45 in this formula here. Okay, so here if theta equal to 45, then we will get it simply m into u cube into cos 45 into sin square 45. And that is to be whole divided by 2g, which can also be simplified further. So as to get it as m u cube into, what is the value of cos 45? It's 1 by root 2. And what is the value of sin square 45? Sin 45 is also 1 by root 2. But because of this square, it will become 1 by 2. And that is to be read by g, 2g as it is. So that this L at the highest point will be modified as a 2 ke saath milke 4 ban jayega. Or root 2 bhi aapne niche chala jayega. Either so that we can get this 4 root 2 in the denominator. And full and finally, we can get this as m into u cube upon 4 root 2 g as a final value for angular momentum at the highest point for a projectile which is projected at an angle 45 degree. Okay. Yes, so let us stop here at this point. Okay.